Hello, hello. Hello, teacher. Good evening. Good evening, good evening. Welcome to class. Thank you. Welcome to Wednesday. También se le conoce como hump day. Because it's the middle of the week. <laughs> Viernes chiquito. Yeah, very, very. <laughs> very, very. Hello, hello. We're going to wait for a couple of minutes. Okay. And then see where everybody is. ¿Y qué tal como ha estado? Oh, very well. It was a normal day and I doing some things according to day and I working in a platform. Oh, that's really nice to hear. Yes, I finished that unit four. Oh my goodness, okay. Well done, well done. I think we're going to cover a little bit about section maybe one through three and then a little bit of the midterm today. Okay. So hopefully we can do that. Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. Good evening, teacher. How you doing, Joe? Good evening, just, teacher. Just arriving. <laughs> nice, nice. Just arriving home. Hi, Lisa, welcome. It feels nice to get home. Really happy to hear that. Okay, so we're gonna start off and let me begin by sharing a little bit here. Let's start with the sharing first. Good evening, everybody. Hi, hello, mm -hmm. good evening. All right, there it is. Um, they send a quick message, so I have some updates for you guys. Eh, oficialmente, el curso se acaba December 10th, el 10, de, el, el 10 de diciembre se acaba el curso, que quiere decir que en el, los módulos tendrían que estar ya terminados para diciembre 10. Así es que creo que nos quedan dos semanas, maybe three. No, or three weeks, right? Three weeks. Tres semanas. El 10. El 10 de, el 10 de diciembre. Dos semanas y un día. Dos semanas y un día. Oh my goodness. Sí, porque sería. Dos días. Eh, quiero ver. Cuatro días con el 30 de. O sea, la semana del 30 de noviembre al, al, 3, al 4 de diciembre. Y okay. la otra es del 7 al 10, otros cuatro días. That is correct. Días. Yeah, you have, yeah, that's correct. Entonces, nosotros estamos aquí el 25. Mañana es el día del chumpipollo. <laughs> ¿Quiénes de, de ustedes celebran Thanksgiving? No, 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 no lo celebran. No. Uh, ¿Alguno de ustedes que tenga familiares o amigos que lo celebren? Eh, solo los que viven en Estados Unidos. Solo los. Aquí los, en El Salvador. El hermano lejano, ok. I, I have a friend who works in the U.S. Embassy. And oh, he, he celebrates oh, the Thanksgiving Day. And they take it very serious. We used to watch. We used to watch the football match all day. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, that's that's it. So Thanksgiving when I, is about. When I work. Yes, yes. When I work in the American school, all time we take vacation for the Thursday and Friday for the people celebrating with their that, families. That is correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very very. Yeah, and the, and in the school, we celebrate with a, a dinner. Mm -hmm. 
Nice. Yeah, you know, it's, it, it's really nice. A mí lo que me gusta es la comida. Eh, sí. Yo creo que el, el tener ese chumpe, que sea chumpe de verdad. Y sí. fíjense que la manera que lo hacen es un poquito diferente. Nosotros tenemos la tendencia, we have the tendency of making chicken or maybe turkey y lo hacemos como en a lot of juices. You know, mm -hmm. es, como, es como hacer el, 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 el famoso panes con pollo. Entonces uh -huh. va el pan, va el pollo, pero el pollo viene como en un, como en un caldito. Que se, el, ¿Cómo se dice eso? El consomé. El, el, no sé cómo. Uh -huh. Pero bueno, eh, el recaudo. El, el recaudo, uh -huh. eso. Pues el pavo en sí, fíjense que no lo hacen así, no lo preparan así sino que para mantenerlo eh, bien jugoso por dentro, lo que hacen es tratan de sellarlo con su propia piel y adentro, eh, el, el famoso stuffing que le dicen, le ponen bastantes cosas para crear como ese vaporcito por dentro. ¿sí? Entonces, so when, you, when you eat the American way of cooking a turkey, se siente una gran diferencia porque, porque está seco por fuera, pero por dentro está bien jugosito. ¿sí? Entonces, so, mm. so the food is really good. Um, really big holiday in the United States. Uh, anybody that works for, for example, an American company or a company that's very, very Americanized will usually have Thanksgiving as a day off. Uh, it's a holiday. Eh, hay unas compañías que sí lo pagan. But in su mayoría, Thanksgiving, even though it's a national holiday in the United States, I don't think it's paid. Eh, no me recuerdo haber escuchado a alguien que diga, ay, sí me pagaron for taking the day off on Thanksgiving. I don't remember that, pero, pero puede ser que sí. A in ver. the American school, they paid. They, it was they, a paid? They, uh -huh, yes. Two it was days, a paid the, oh. the Thursday and the Friday, and in the, the, the day of the Thanksgiving, the, the employees, Oh, have a meeting nice. and, and take some some food or the or this or some some yeah. things and the, the mothers uh, give uh, um, several uh, turkeys. Okay. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. So so let me tell you, what are the foods for Thanksgiving? So that you guys, if you guys are talking to somebody in the United States or somebody that has already been you know, um, covered by that culture, eh, el pavo. Eh, usualmente es un pavo gigante, un pavo para la gente, es un pavo horneado, but it's very crispy on the outside. So the turkey is like the main focus, pero también puede haber jamón, que es un trozo de jamón gigante que hacen con piña y cosas así. So mm -hmm. you can also see the ham, y para las personas que no comen eso, fíjense que se enfocan mucho en los vegetales. Uh, sí, sí. Creo que hay, hay, hay ciertos, bueno, la, ¿cómo me dicen eso? La, la yam. ¿Quién, quién, ¿Quién sabe qué es la, una yam? Que parece yuca, pero no es yuca, sino que es dulce. ¿Cómo le dicen? En México tienen una palabra famosa para... El camote. El camote, el famoso camote, sí. Fíjense que eh, es bien popular. Es, es, si ustedes van y ustedes ven un Thanksgiving feast, lo que nunca debe de faltar es el camote. A, ahora, they call it differently, le llaman el yam. Y este famoso yam tiene una fruta, una, como una gelatina que se le echa encima. So it, it's really good. Um, besides that, están los, está un famoso pastel, the pumpkin pie. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Y hay otra cosa que se llama, pum, se llama pumpkin spice. No sé, bueno, tal vez ustedes lo han visto en, en Starbucks, que el café se llama pumpkin spice coffee o frosty, no sé cómo le dicen, pero es pumpkin spice. Ese también es famoso porque lo ponen en la bebida. Uh, también está el gravy, que va con, eh, con, con la papa, el puré de papa. And so usually the basics are the turkey, uh, you have the yams, you have the jelly for the yams, you have the mashed potatoes, and then you have the gravy. Y ahí está. That's your Thanksgiving dinner. Y, y la idea es, 
uh, bueno, se celebra en el último, o el, sí, el último jueves de, no, de noviembre. Sí, sí. Entonces, el último jueves de noviembre. So, very famous in the United States. Um, mm -hmm. In the call center world, también se celebra mucho, eh, because, of course, most of the call centers here in El Salvador le dan support a los Estados Unidos. So, um, it, it's very, very popular within the call center community as well. Okay, so we were talking about how many weeks left. So we finished on the 10th. And like you were saying, you guys were right. So we have two weeks and one day. Because today is Wednesday and then tomorrow is Thursday. So, ocho, nueve días nos quedan pendientes. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do a quick review on our platform and see how we're doing. A ver. And then, so what you can do is just either tell me that you're okay or show me, you know, your, your thumbs up um, if I ask you how are we doing in our section. So let's start that off. In our platform section one, does everybody have the chequecito verde? And have you guys completed it? Has it been completed? Yes, everybody? Yes. Everybody good? All yes. right. Nice yeah. to hear it. Nice to hear that. Nice to hear that. Well done. All right. So we're moving to section number two. And then same thing. Chequecito verdes or, or the little check mark. And have we completed all of section two from lesson 2.0 to 2.10? Is everybody good? Yes. Yes? Yes. Fantastic to hear. Fantastic to hear. Let me go ahead and close down these sections. And then, so we go into our section number three. In section number three, how did we do? Have we been Not able yet. to complete? Not yet? No. Okay. Not yet. Not yet. All right, so remem yet. remember that we're doing really good because we still have tomorrow left. And that means that next week and the week after that, we are going to be able to complete section four and section number five. And I think that we're gonna have plenty of time with the eight days that we have available. Okay, so within section three, I wanted to go over the midterm. Um, I know that some of us maybe uh, don't complete the lesson objectives and then we jump into the midterm and sometimes we are able to complete these. So I want to be able to review maybe the first three just to be safe. And then you guys can do the next three on your own or maybe we can review them tomorrow. Um, so what is in section three? ¿Qué es lo que se tiene que ver o lo que tenemos que estar viendo? Uh, bueno, si ustedes pueden observar, from here we had the request with models, if clauses and gerunds. Luego comenzamos a ver, uh, we had a little bit of, uh, let me see here. I, I think we didn't go into the favors, but we had been covering how to ask uh, for different requests. Or, or actually, that, that's, that, that was actually it. Requests, asking with models was, I think, uh, another version of what we were looking at. Y si ustedes pueden observar, 3.8, 3.9, 3.10, and 3.11 are all focused on requests, how to ask for something. And then it starts off with using that, using infinitives. Do you guys remember what an infinitive was? Do you guys remember infinitive? The words... The words, it was two specific words. Do you guys remember? No, no. Did we see it? I, I can't remember if we saw that already. But if, we, if you guys are using words like to be, maybe that rings a bell, infinitive? No. All right, let me see if I can find it. Where was it? Darren's. The personalities. Oh. You know what? I can't remember where I left it. Relatives, we saw some of that stuff. 
Or maybe I put it in the wrong side. Uh, let me see. I'm pretty sure I maybe showed you guys a little bit. All right. So an infinitive, the words to be, or actually is just adding to. So you guys can say to be, to arrive, or to prepare. Well, you can ask a question using an infinitive, to. So it also, we cover that here. Um, words like weather and questions in, in general. All right. So with these examples, what we're going to do today, I'm going to cover them all. And then I'm going to go into the midterm, the first three options of the midterm. And then that way, maybe um, this stuff here will help you guys with the midterm itself. So let's start with that. Let's jump right into it. And I want you guys to keep in mind that we're going to go back into the platform. Para ver para ver este, los requests. So for today, now we start off with a quick review of the platform. We're gonna end it with a review of the midterm in the platform, hopefully. Uh, we're gonna start off with our practice exercise, which is the reading, and then a quick questionnaire on the reading, except that this time, I'm gonna ask you guys right from here, right? So as soon as we finish reading, we're gonna go back into it. And then I'm gonna ask you specific questions from the material itself. And then you get to answer, okay? All right, so this one is a little bit longer. And so for this one, I'm gonna give you guys three minutes, three minutes. And the three minutes are going to start right now. ¿Qué tal? ¿Lo lograron? ¿Lo lograron? Did you guys complete it? Yes. Yes, I did, but I found some work I don't understand. Okay, okay. Let's work on those words. Uh, let me see. What what words did you have a, a problem with? Ox. Ox? Okay. You know, I want to say that this is like a, like a big cow. 
so it, it's very popular like in China and the Asian countries. And so the ox is like a big cow, like a big bull. Can you see my screen? Let me show you what it looks like. There it is. So now it, it's very popular like in Asian countries. And if you look at it, like you say, oh, well, that's a cow or that's a bull. Mm -hmm. Es un toro, es una vaca, pero they're not, they're, they're bigger. And the horns, you see mm -hmm. how the horns are just huge sometimes? Yeah. Y, en, y en ciertas partes eh, tienen como un, tienen un hump bien grande. So you guys see that one here? Like a sí, so pare, pa, parecen, parecen. O sea, they're in the same, sí, they're in the same family. Solo que uh, si, si, si le dicen ox, o sea, si dicen ox, Usualmente las oxes se ven mucho más seguido en, en Asia. Así es que, all right. A ver, so ya sabemos que una ox es como un, como un toro, una vaca, solo que un poquito más grande. Como un búfalo. Se puede decir que también se parece mucho a un búfalo. Como un buey. Como un buey, porque también tiene la joroba. Así uh -huh. que tal vez. Cebú. Un cebú. Que, eh, sí, muy parecido, cabal. Ok, otra palabra, otra palabra. Suelo. Solo, solo la de O. Suelo. Suelo. Suelo it up, teacher. ¿Cuál es? The fraud, suelo it up. Even bigger. Ah, bueno, eh, usted ha visto lo, los sapos aquí. Mm -hmm. que, le, que dicen, tirarle la piedra al sapo y uno le tira la piedra y se hinchan. Mm -hmm. Y se ponen así bien gordotes. Bueno, e, eso significa, the frog swelled up even bigger. Porque se hinchó, se infló. Entonces... No sé cómo le puede decir a esta. Bueno, aquí, cuando uno ve un sapo y le tira una piedra, ellos, los sapos se hinchan. Se hacen bien gorditos. Entonces tenés que agarrar una piedra más grande todavía. <risa> All right. So, here we go. The frog and the ox. A ver, para ustedes. Y eso me lo pueden decir en español o en inglés como ustedes quieran. Para ustedes, ¿qué entendieron ustedes de la historia? What was sí. the meaning? Que iba él caminando. Frog was empty. Sí. Perdón, perdón, creo que hubo ahí un, una confrontación. Ajá. Ajá. Eso que ya no. Sí. A ver, Ana Gloria, usted estaba diciendo, a ver, veo, vamos. Yes, well, I think the, the ox was working and uh, with the, his dress is poorly, but uh, the uh, important uh, frog saw him and she, how do you say, she Ana Gloria, for their Beautiful. Okay, okay. But the girls yelled to to her friend. It, it, she tried to avergonzar um, uh, the, the ox. I think she tried. She tried. Okay, okay. So avergonzar, I think you could say embarrass. Embarrass. Embarrass is the word. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. ¿Quién más? ¿Quién más? Sí, es como que sentía celos del ox. Sentía un poquito de celos. Okay, okay. 
A ver, creo que levantó la mano, levantó la mano. Leslie. A ver, ok. ¿Qué más se puede decir? Entonces, comenzamos con la historia, ¿verdad? Viene the frog, and the frog sees this ox, and the frog starts to tell his friend, you know what, I can be as beautiful and big as him. And so he starts getting bigger and bigger. And his friends start telling him, hey, don't get too big. You know what could happen if you get bigger? So what happened at the end when he puffed and puffed? What ended up happening to him? That the frog Birds. wanted to be as big as to ox because the, the sign of frog is normal and the ox is very bigger. The ox is very big. Because right. related to the history, Maybe the frog, the frog is jealous. Okay. Maybe uh, oh. for his uh, friends uh, about the tall to magnific ox. Okay. So now what happened at the end to the frog? He exploded. He exploded. He just completely exploded. And so what do you guys think is the point of the story? The envy is the bad. Envy is bad. That you got it. You got it. You know, I, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to lie to you guys. Maybe sometimes there is a little bit of envy that comes, you know. Cuando paso por una casa y yo veo que tienen las flores bien bonitas y las mías todas marchitas, yo me siento mal porque digo yo, ¿y cómo es que le hacen con esas flores? ¿Va? So I feel a little bit of envy. ¿va? Luego regreso en la noche y me robo las flores para irlas a pegar donde yo las tengo. But that's bad too. That's really bad. Y me robo, ¿Cómo es? Se roba las la rudas, me robo el sábila, todo eso. Todo. Entonces, envy Are... is bad. <laughs> Envy is bad, and that's the point of the story. All right, good, good job, good job, guys. Well done. Okay, hoy sí. Vamos a pasar a los indirect requests, se llaman estos. And we're going to try to cover the majority of the ones that are on section three, and then you guys can go back and you guys can review the section. Entonces, the idea is to always try to see some of the some of the material or some of the lessons while we're still here. Let me see if I can put the lessons. I I don't know what happened to the I thought I had it. Oh, I had them with the oxes. Okay. Okay. So section three from 3.8 to 3.11 is gonna talk about what we're about to cover. Indirect requests. Si se llaman estos. So, so that you guys have an idea, indirect requests have a variety of forms that we can use. We have statements, we have imperatives, we have yes, no questions, and we have WH questions. So the statement is Jeff, Tony's having a party. So yo le estoy hablando a alguien que se llama Jeff y de entrada yo le digo, Jeff, Tony va a tener una fiesta. Tony's having a party. That right there is a statement. Ahora, un imperative. Jeff, don't be late. Jeff, no vayas a llegar tarde. We have yes, no questions. Sophia, are you free on Friday? Sophia, do you have my number? Sophia, 
¿Estás libre este viernes? ¿Estás libre este viernes? ¿Vas a estar libre este viernes? Es que en español no se escucha muy bien, ¿va? Vas a estar libre este viernes. Y no somos libres todos, pues. <risa> Sofía, ¿ya tienes mi número? ¿O tienes ya mi número? ¿O tenés mi número? Y tenemos las preguntas que comienzan con la W, H, W, H, question. Jeff, when does the party start? Sophia, what time should I pick you up? So, lo que nosotros vamos a hacer el día de hoy es vamos a convertir todas estas preguntas y las vamos a hacer indirectas. Indirect requests. And we're going to use different methods. For example, that. We're going to use infinitives. We're going to use whether. We are going to use question. So, in a statement, how do you turn a statement into an indirect request? Well, we take Jeff, Tony's having a party. Y le vamos a agregar una porción. Le vamos a agregar, could you tell Jeff? Y vamos a introducir la palabra that. A la porción que dice, Tony is having a party. Para que se escuche de esta manera. Could you tell Jeff that Tony is having a party? A ver, repeat after me. No tienen que encender su mic. Lo pueden hacer solo ustedes, pero just do me a favor and repeat it. So, indirect request using that. Could you tell Jeff that Tony's having a party? Una vez más. Could you tell Jeff that Tony's having a party? Okay. ¿Qué acabamos de hacer? What did we just do? We converted a statement and we made it an indirect request. Everybody okay so far? Can you tell, can you tell, could you tell Jose that we have class on Friday, indirect request. And what we're doing is we're using that. No, we don't have a class on Friday. No, we don't, we don't, Joe, it was, <laughs> it was a joke, it was a joke. Les pago ti, oh! Okay, all right. So now we're gonna move into imperatives. How are we gonna do it? Instead of using that, we are going to use an infinitive, to. So, what we're going to do is we're going to say, can you tell Jeff not to be late? Mm -hmm. Can you tell your sister not to go mm -hmm. to the market? Can you tell my mom not to be late? You know, there's many versions that you can use. Siempre cuando tú lo inicies así. Can. Can you tell my mom not to be late? Aquí está el infinitive. Y esta es la porción que le acabamos de agregar. El original que era, Jeff, don't be late. Eso se llaman imperatives. Y lo que acabamos de hacer es lo acabamos de convertir en un indirect request using infinitives. All right, let's do the same thing for a yes, no question. Sofia, are you free on Friday? Indirect request. And it's going to be introduced by if or whether. Ahora, esta cláusula de aquí se llama if, pero 
también incluye whether. So whenever you guys hear the clause if, it could be either if or whether. Cualquiera de los dos se puede ocupar. Can you ask Sofía if she's free on Friday? Y aquí está el if. Can you ask Sofía if she's free on Friday? All right, now we're going to turn. Sofia, do you have my number? Could you ask her whether or not she has my number? Aquí incluimos el whether. Pero si ustedes se pueden fijar, cambiamos el nombre propio de Sofia y ahora le pusimos her. Could you ask her whether or not she has my number? Ahora, ¿se puede ocupar Sofía? Could you ask Sofía whether or not she has my number? Pero se escucha un poquito, a little bit off. It sounds like it, it needs something extra. Right? Ahora, the best way to do it would be, could you ask her whether or not she has my number? Para que no afectes la palabra weather. Y la última es, las palabras co comienzan con WH. Jeff, when does the party start? Y el, the indirect request introduced by a question word is going to be, can you ask Jeff when the party starts? Could you ask Sofia what time I should pick her up? Sería, Sofia, what time should I pick you up? So, can you ask Jeff or could you ask Sofia? Y se puede ocupar when or what? Porque son palabras with W-H. Can you ask Jeff where can I pick him up? Porque son WH. So you can do when, you can say what, you can say where, you can even use who. Siempre y cuando ustedes la comiencen así. Can you ask Jeff? Could you ask Sofia? Is Jeff. everybody, yes, yes. Eh, es necesario, es necesario ¿vale? que yo comience, can you? O puedo cambiar el ask por say or tell. You can you can use say and you can say tell, but but you're gonna have to change some of this. So for example, can you tell Jeff when the party is going to start? So you're gonna have to change a few more things here to make tell fit in. So you can use it, pero, pero you just have to be careful on the remaining part of the sentence. Porque, por ejemplo, si vos, le, si vos le dejas solo, can you tell Jeff when the party starts? Se puede ocupar, pero se escucha un poquito, se, se, se escucha un poquito raro. Can you tell Jeff when the party starts? Too sure. Sí. I guess, too, if we use tell, it make a affirmative sentence. If we say ask, we make a question. Right, right. Right, so, in, so, so that's why I was telling you, so you could use it, but then you're going to have to reformat this portion here to make it different. Porque en esta que tú I may suppose haciendo, is that. Right. So, so instead of you saying, can you ask? It stops being, well, right now it's a question. Can you ask Jeff when the party starts? But when you say, can you tell Jeff? That changes how this sounds. So it doesn't make any sense. It, it doesn't make, you know, it sounds kind of weird because... Ya estás ocupando esta. 
que sería okay. Thank que, you. Se, que sería como que estás you're, you're trying to make well it, it's almost like a statement el de arriba can you tell so the minute that you put the tell in there así como tú dijiste ya, ya lo estás diciendo como una afirmación instead of a question so yeah that, that's that's pretty much it Claudita but remember you could still use it I mean the only thing you would have to do is tendrías que arreglar la sentence to make it fit Okay. okay. Thank you. All right. Teacher, All right. Sí, the, sí. The, the word rare is not usually used. The, the word rare. Could you ask her whether or not she has many the, the one that says weather? Uh -huh. Right. No, it, it, we, don't, we don't really use it that much uh -huh. because the simplest thing that you could do is you can ask a direct question you know uh, usually what we do is we ask well does she have my number or not entonces es, es directa la pregunta que usualmente hacemos es bien raro cuando alguien viene y ocupa weather because it, it's a little bit more you know indirect so you might not use it or you might not hear it that often, but it is a way. All right. So we're going to move and we're going to go into the different, the different types of requests. We have direct and indirect. And with that, we have the WH question, as you guys can see. We have the indirect questions. Okay. And we have the yes no question. If, whether, or positive word order. So these are the four types that you guys will also see in the lessons. Mm -hmm. And so the direct question is, 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 you know, it's just how you're hearing it. Direct. Where is Tondo Street? Rápido, directo al punto. Where is Tondo Street? How much do you earn? Direct. Luego están las indirectas. Indirect. And these are indirect positive word order. Can you tell me where Tondo Street is? So as you guys can see, direct and indirect. Okay. All right. Next one. Yes, no question. Are you living in London? Are you living in London? E. This one could be if, whether, or positive word. I'd like to know if you are living in London. So, there's a direct format. Are you living in London? Or you can sound really nice and polite. Well, I'd like to know if you are living in London still. Y las personas te, te van a contestar. Do you know whether John likes flying? I'm not sure if she went shopping. Can you tell me whether she was a teacher? Are you living in London? Does John like flying? Did she go shopping? Was she a teacher? These are the different formats. Okay. So how does that look to make it easy for us? The direct questions, well, you can start off with who is she? Or where can I sit? And it doesn't get any more direct than that. But the indirect question uses something a little bit different. Because you could put an indirect question in a question. Do you know who she is? Ah, hay dos preguntas. Can you tell me where I can sit? Or you can use an indirect question in a statement. He is asking who she is. I wonder. Where can I sit? 
but there's no question marks. You see that? Yeah. So if you do an indirect question, it's okay if it doesn't have a question mark. He is asking who she is. I wonder, where can I sit? Can you tell me where I can sit? Two questions. Do you know who she is? Two questions. And so an indirect question is a question embedded inside a statement. If you want to look at a definition or the rule. And this can be a declarative interrogative sentence or a declarative sentence. Esa era completa, I'm sorry about that. And so you get, a, you get an example of a direct question. Do you like cheese? What would you answer if I asked you, do you like cheese? Yes, I do. Okay, all right, right, because you heard what I was saying. So let's say you miss what I heard. What would you tell me? So let's say I asked the class, hey, do you like cheese? Pero vos no me escuchaste. What do you usually say when that happens? Yes, I do. Okay, okay. Pero que tal si no escuchaste mi pregunta? What if you didn't hear my question completely? Mm. Can what you we, tell me? Okay. Will you okay. repeat me the quest, your question, please? Can you please repeat the question or can you tell me that question one more time? And then so, yo de metido, da, yo que estoy en la clase, que soy tu compañero, yo don metido, hola, buenas, vengo y digo, <laughs> he asked whether you like cheese. Y ahí, en ese momento, yo ya hice una indirect question a lo que yo estaba, a, a, a lo que yo estaba diciendo. So, el profe hizo una pregunta directa, pero cuando tú no me, no me escuchaste y te lo tuve que repetir, ahí en ese momento ya se convirtió en una indirect question. Porque ya tuve que decir, she asked whether you like cheese. Or she asked whether I like cheese. Porque la pregunta me la hizo a mí. ¿Nah? Y ahora yo le voy a contestar que yes, I like the cheese. All right. So I want you guys to just keep in mind that when you have a direct question, most of the time es e rápida y es bien directa. Okay, what time did the train leave? That's, nah. But if we were converting that into indirect questions, then it would change a little bit because we would need to add, she wonders what time the train leave. And then so there's a couple of things that change. When will Susan arrive? Could you tell me when Susan will arrive? And as you guys can see, we had to add, she wonders, and we, add, we added, could you tell me? And then we had them like that. So usually we start off with a direct question is what time does the train leave? But an indirect question starts off with an introductory phrase. In este caso, can you tell me? Then the question word and then the request. So it sounds like this. Can you tell me what time the train leaves. Si tú estás haciendo una pregunta que comienza con can or any introductory phrase for that matter, then you are using an indirect question. Ahora, esta también se puede considerar como una cláusula. This is an indirect question with a noun clause and you can actually refer to them as that do you know who she is that is a noun clause can you tell me where i can sit noun clause where i can sit and who she is 
también they fall under this category. So you guys will hear, whenever you guys hear something like that, like where I can sit, right before, can you tell me? That is a noun clause that's being used. Okay. ¿Cómo se puede convertir? How can we create an indirect request? Or what many, or what types of indirect requests can we create? We can create an indirect request by using that. We can create an indirect request by using uh, infinitives. We can create indirect requests by using if or whether. We can create requests by using a question word. Okay. And I have let me see here. I think I had a little bit more for you guys. Or maybe we're gonna we're gonna call it. I think we're gonna put a I think we're gonna put a pause on this one. And let me see if I have the indirect requests and yes no question. Oh that one is pretty this one's pretty long too. Could you guys do me a huge favor? Tomorrow, as soon as we come in, can you guys please remind me to use our worksheets for the indirect request? And then we'll cover Whiteboards. this space. Yeah, indirect request. Y esta se llama worksheets. So tomorrow, as soon as we come in, we're going to complete this one before we jump into our section three and then the midterm. If you guys can complete the midterm, please go ahead and do so. And then we can review it tomorrow. As you guys can see, I already did three, which we can review tomorrow. Um, or do you guys want to review, did you guys have any problems for the people that, that completed the midterm? Did you guys have any problems with the section? Would you like to review yeah. one of the sections? I didn't try, but I will try. I, I, I will ask you if I had any problems because um, really I didn't try to. Okay. I, I finished the, 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 the section one. And the lesson two, but the other side don't, I don't, I didn't. Okay, so section one and section two, you did complete. I finished. Okay. And then, so you started working section three. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you like what we can do for tomorrow, we can do a quick review of section three, and then mm -hmm. we can go into the midterm real quick, and then we can focus pretty much the whole day on that. And then if anybody has a question or wants to cover something else, we can. Thank you. Okay. All right. It's okay. Thank you know you. what I have, you know, there's a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. Let me see here. Let me see if maybe we can, if we can do one or two. Maybe make it a little bit larger. Uh, let me see. This one's pretty easy. I think we can complete this one. Okay, so look, with this one, with this exercise, you have to listen to the request, and then you have to tell me whether to use ask or tell. Okay? All right. So number one says, if you see Mary, can you blank her that she left her phone in my car? Can you... Tell. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. Number two. If you see Mary, could you blank her whether or not she's coming to the teacher's meeting? Ask her. Ask, ask her. Ask her. Ask okay. Her. If you see Miss Martin, can you blank her if she graded our tests yet? Tell. Uh, ask. Tell. Can you tell? 
I heard you ask? I heard two tells and one ask. I think. What do you guys think? Tell or ask? Tell. Tell? Ask. Uh, oh, oh, I think we're, we might be 3-2. 3-2. Mm. I, I, I think it's ask. Can you ask, can you ask? ask? ask her? I think, ask her. I, think, I think we have a little bit more ask now. Okay. <laughs> if you see Ms. Martin, can you ask her if she's greater or test? Yet? Okay. Number four, if you see Mary, please blank her not to forget the student's reports. Tell her. Tell, tell. tell. tell her. Tell. Okay. If you see Mary, could you blank her to find me in the cafeteria after her meeting? Tell. Tell her. Tell. Tell. tell you ask. Tell, tell, ask. Mm -hmm. Oh. Tell. I think Ms. I think. Mary, could you tell her to find me in the cafeteria after, after the her meeting? meeting. Yeah, yes, that's. Sir. All right, let's leave tell. Let's see what happens. If you see Miss Martin, would you and then blank her ask what time? Her. This one is ask. 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 Okay, a ver, vamos, vamos. Ooh, there's a lot of work for tomorrow. Look at that, guys. Closing my eyes. Oh, it was ask. Number five was ask. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. All right. So for those who said ask, uh, I'm sorry, me dejé llevar por todo lo demás. <laughs> all right, all right, ladies and gentlemen. So les regreso, les regreso tres minutos. Eh, muchísimas gracias. Pasen muy buenas noches y los veo mañana. Okay, teacher. Adios, Thank everybody. you. Good night. Thank you, teacher. Good, Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.